everybody. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to Strength for the Journey, our Bible study here at Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries. You are welcome. Come on in. You are welcome to like this. You are welcome to share this. You are welcome to comment. You are welcome to get engaged. You are welcome to drop your name and say, I'm here with you, Pastor and First Lady. Again, this is Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries. This is Bible study. Yes. Grab a piece of paper. Grab a pen. Come on, write these scriptures down. Let's let the Lord talk to us. And as he's talking to us, let's study his word. Let's study to show ourselves approved. Let's a show a, the Lord that we are here, Lord. We're listening, Lord. We're ready, Lord. When I'm praying, I like to ask the Lord to open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our hearts, open up our understanding. Let us see you, Lord. Let us hear you, Lord. Let us be open to everything that the Lord is doing in our lives. Yes. So you are welcome to come on in and join us for some Bible study, Pastor. Glory, hallelujah. We thank God for you on tonight. We're so privileged to have another, uh, another opportunity, excuse me, to have audience with you. And first and foremost, we always want you to remember that the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And so I'm grateful, as my wife just stated, that you're with us on tonight so that you can come and find strength for your journey. And that is indeed this journey called life. Once again, we are getting ready to continue in our series part two of talking about church hurt. You know, many of us have been hurt in church and because of the hurt that we've received, Many of us don't want to go to church. Many of us don't pray like we used to pray. Many of us don't uh, talk to God like we used to talk to God. We don't fast like we used to fast. We don't praise God like we used to praise God because of the hurt that we received in church. So we want you to be encouraged on tonight and we're getting ready to continue in this series called Church Hurt so that you can be encouraged and that you can be strengthened in your inner man. But before we do that, I'm going to ask my lovely wife if she'll lead us in prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, this day, we come before you, God, and we say thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for an opportunity to hear your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another opportunity to be in your presence, God. We thank you and we welcome you in, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in this Bible study. Have your way in each and every last one of our lives. Have your way, Lord Jesus, as we endeavor, God, to strive to be perfect, strive for holiness, strive to live our lives the way you desire for us to live our lives, God. Oh, God, show us which way you want us to go. Show us what you want us to say. Show us how you want us to live our lives, each and every individual that's on this live, God. And we will always give you the praise, honor, glory that's due your name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name. Once again, beloved, we was talking from the subject church hurt. Yeah. And on last week, we gave you two steps and we're going to continue in our steps and how to recover from the church hurt that you received. And the first one was to define your church hurt and you have to know exactly where your hurt has been or rather has taken place in your life discouragement that you received that was birthed in church your disappointment that came from those within the church we talked about how oftentimes it can come from a church leader who has abused their power and how they have let you down and has birthed within you feelings of anger confusion and bitterness towards God and so that was the first one we want you to define your church hurt and then the second one is to and this is very important to separate the church hurt from God character we told you last week that some aspects of God's character are crystal clear as you read the word of God as you pray and you spend time in the presence of the Lord you will understand that the aspect of God's character are crystal clear throughout the Bible and as you spend time with him in other words if you feel busted up or beaten this is what we told you or if you feel busted or button or beaten on by a church community it's important to step back for a moment and remind yourself who God is apart from the hurtful actions that you have had to go through. We have to understand that how people treat us is not how God responds to us. You know what? I wanted to jump in because I know we did this last week, but I wanted to say this on those two points. The first thing I'm thinking about is, first of all, you have to identify how you got hurt. What happened? Identify your church hurt. And, and we have to be honest with ourselves. A lot of times we take our hurt and our pain and the things that we go through, we take it out on other people, people that do not deserve that. 
you know. So you know this person hurt you, but you're going to blame it on this person over here, and then you're going to continue to allow that person to be harmed or other people to be harmed. You know the attitudes when they said hurt people hurt people. Yeah. So that's the first one. The second one is God ain't did nothing to you, you know, but we like to blame God. And I remember doing that myself. I remember when I was young and I remember when my, my father passed away, I got angry with God. But one thing I've been saying lately is God can handle you been angry with him. God can handle that. But what we have to do is we have to go and lay it at his feet. We have to lay every single emotion, every single thought at his fate. Lord, this is how I'm feeling. You know, a lot of times when we get angry and we get emotional and we have that hurt <clears throat> and that wound, what we do is we tend to move away from God right. instead of moving towards him and saying, okay, God, you said in all thy ways, acknowledge you and you will direct my path. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need some help with this. You said, Lord, in your word to look towards the hills because all of your help comes from the Lord. So instead of us looking towards the Lord, instead of us looking at, like you said, his character, who he really is, we turn away from him. We get angry at him because you allowed this to happen. God allows what he allows because he wants us to be strengthened. He allows what he allows because he wants us to grow. He said trials and tribulations are here to make us strong and give us strength. Amen. 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 You know, one of the things that I, th I love about the Lord is that you know, we don't understand why we go through what we go through. But as you just st uh, stated, we have to remember that God allows us to go through trials and tribulations to grow us, to transform us, to transition us, because he's forming us into the image of his dear son. And that is the Lord Jesus, the Christ. We have to remember that what we go through and it's unfortunate that we have to go through it in church. But as we said on last week, you have not experienced church hurt or hurt until you've experienced it in church and from the people of God. The word of God tells us that we ought to have a special love for they that are the household of faith. And so when you come into the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you experience hurt in that manner, it seems almost insurmountable that you're dealing with what you're dealing with. But we still have to understand. Think about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he came unto his own and what happened? His people received him not. They crucified him. One day they said, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And the next day they said, crucify him. And they led him to the cross. They led him to Golgotha's hill and they killed him. So we have to understand that we, if we are walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, what did he say? He said, they that choose or desire to reign with me must first suffer with me. So we have to understand and embrace the fact that God is allowing us to go through this hurt so that we can reign with him, so that we can grow with him, so that we can receive the level of anointing and the level of, watch this, this I might get in trouble here, this level of compassion and mercy that he has towards us. What did he say on the cross before he gave up the ghost and said it is finished? He said, Father, forgive them. Oh, uh, y'all don't like me tonight. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know that what they know, they know not what they do. Wait a minute. The people that crucified him, the people that he came, hallelujah to God, to save, the people that he came to deliver out of bondage and out of the penalty of sin were the very ones that crucified him. Because he said, Pray for those. He said, Love those that hate you. And pray for those that despitefully misuse you, mistreat you. We're supposed to love them even though they hate us. We're supposed to pray for them even though they despitefully misuse us and mistreat us. But this is one thing that you said, and I'm like, I'm going to challenge him when he said that. Why can't we still stay in church when we get that church hurt? Because look at it this way. When you're in a hospital and, and, and you're going in there because you got sick or something harmed you, right? Because, you know, remember hurt that church hurt, that word hurt means to wound. It means to uh, have pain or, or things of that nature. So if you have pain or you hurt, why not stay in church? This is my thinking. If you was in the hospital, you went into the hospital because remember, church is like a hospital. If you go into the hospital and you went in there because you were harmed in such a way you have pain, you don't leave there harmed. You don't leave there with pain. And guess what? If something else occurred while you were there, you went there for one thing, but something else came up while you were there. You don't leave the hospital. You stay there and you get the healing. So you stay at church. 
You stay before the face of the Lord because the Lord is the only um, um, being that will be able to heal and deliver and set us free from everything and anything that's not like him. So just because I got hurt in church, I'm not going to pack up my bags and don't ever go back to church. Now, sometimes we get harmed such a way in one particular location. That means that we can't stay in that location, but don't walk away from God. Don't walk away from the church. Don't walk away from the very thing he says. Suffer not yourself to fellowship together. We need each other. You need me. I need you. You need the head. The head need the feet. The head ain't going nowhere without the feet. The head ain't going nowhere without that neck turning them his, this way and that way. The head ain't doing anything without the hands. So we have to remember we are a body fitly joined together. together and because we're fitly joined together we're in this thing together and what we have to do as we said last time we have to go clear those thoughts up a lot of those misunderstandings turn into hurt because we don't take the time to say you know what your actions made me feel like this and just because you go to that person that person is supposed to receive you and say you know what your feelings are valid so let me hear you out and let me tell you why because God would have never told you to lay your gift at the altar and go clear it up if he didn't think it was going to be resolution to it if he didn't think there was going to be a reconciliation if he didn't want us to not walk away from that situation and circumstance we're hurt amen amen, amen. absolutely you, we talked about two steps and we said that you need to define your church hurt yes and we told you that you have to know exactly where. We talked about how the man lo lost his axe head and he went to the man of God in the Old Testament in the book of Kings, First Kings. And the man of God asked him a very pertinent question. And I believe that's what God is asking us again on tonight. And he said, where did you lose it? So you have to know where you've been hurt at, where you received um your pain at why you've lost lost your prayer life why you've lost your devotion why you've lost your worship and go back and find it he took him to the very place that it happened and he experienced the loss so you have to ex go back to the same place that you've experienced your hurt and define it then we told you that once you defined it you have to give it to god and so the third step is do you have to know how to recover your power you have to recover your power. And once you recover your power, how do you do that? You have to prioritize your power. In other words, I'm going to give you a scripture. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 42, the word of God says, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. We have to understand this is what we do. And you know what you know it to be true, baby. What we tend to do is when people hurt us in church, it could come from the pastor, it could come from the first lady, it could come from that nasty usher, it can come from whoever in church. But what we tend to do is we get angry with them, and then we have an attitude with them, and we, we tend to treat them negatively. But we cannot do that, as my wife just stated. What we have to do is be good to them that despitefully use us. We have to do what Jesus said. This is why I said it a minute ago jesus said father forgive them we have to understand beloved they killed the lord they beat him all night long the bible says isaiah the eagle eye prophet said that his visage was so marge so marred that we didn't know whether it was a man or a woman that was standing on that cross but he still said father forgive them we cannot have an attitude with those that belong to christ and this is how we prioritize and we reco recover our power we recover our power by forgiving those that hurt us amen amen and in the midst of us forgiving those that hurt us in the midst of us recovering that power we have to make sure that our ground is good Mm -hmm. We have to make sure our ground is good. I have a scripture. It's Luke, the sixth chapter, the 47th through the 48th verse. That's Luke, the sixth chapter, the 47th and the 48th verse. And it reads, whosoever cometh yeah. to me and hearing my sayings, he want us to hear his sayings and do them. I will show you to whom he is like. God, I'm going to show you who he like. Yeah. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the steams beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it for it was founded upon the rock. I wanted this scripture to be in this so badly because no matter what's going on in our lives, mm -hmm. 
no matter how much offense come, no matter how uh, how much how many uh, afflictions come, no matter how how much pain and hurt comes, no matter how much of those different things come our way, if we are founded on the rock. And the rock is the Lord, our Savior, our God, our Jesus, our everything. If we have a strong, solid foundation in him, ain't nobody moving you. Ain't nobody shaking you. I'm not saying it's not going to hurt. I'm not saying you're not going to be angry. The Bible says be angry, but sin not. Right. I'm not saying it's not going to make you feel as the world say, and I hate this saying, some kind of way. I'm not saying it's not going to make you feel some kind of way, but what I'm saying is because we have that foundation in the Lord, because it's a strong foundation, it because it's a foundation that's built after a prayer and fasting and reading the word and the Lord showing you who he is in each and every last one of our lives, you're not going to be shaken. You're not going to take that church hurt and pack up your bags and leave. You're not going to run around and sow discord. You're not going, and I'm not coming at you, Pastor, but you're not going to talk about the usher and call it a nasty usher. Right. A lot of times I was mis. Uh, construed or I was looked at uh, looked upon um, as being a certain way being mean or angry or something like that years ago and stuff like that because of the demeanor that I had when I walked into the church but didn't nobody know at home before I met my husband and married my husband didn't nobody know what was going on in my home sometimes people are leaving their home with so much H-E double hockey sticks going on in their home so much pain in their home so much abuse in their home and by the time they get to church and I feel that in my emotions by the time I got to church I mean you might have saw what I went through at home on my face but I got to church because I needed the people at church I uh, we used to sing this song the Jesus the Jesus and me love the gingers Jesus and you and that was that moment people would step up and give you a hug I didn't want to be hugged even though I needed the hug Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be touched even though I needed that touch I didn't want nobody talking to me during that season, even though I needed somebody to talk to me and pray with me during that season. I needed someone to show me that they cared about me, even though I didn't look like I needed somebody to show me I needed to be cared for, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And the reason why I'm saying is because sometimes you look at people, we look at their demeanor, we look at their face, we look at their actions. And we begin to judge. Remember the scripture that the Bible says the Lord looks at uh, we individuals, we humans. We look at the outer appearance, but the Lord, our God, our father, our savior, our redeemer. He looks at the heart. He knows exactly why we are doing what we're doing, why we behave that way. I love God. I love the fact that he knows all about me. He knows why I'm crying. He knows why I'm smiling. He knows when I look like I'm numb. He knows when I got this mean look on my face God knows me and I said it to say this so that usher that we think that's nasty that choir director that we think that's stuck up all the different people yeah the different people that are in the church that we already have our mind judged on who they are and why they do what they do and my husband he does that all the time you know I say my husband because my pastor I've never seen the pastor do this but (laughs) my husband says this all the time don't judge me by what you think I'm saying or what you think I'm feeling because you don't know you can't make that uh a declarative statement I know exactly why you do what you do or why you thinking what you thinking I know what you thinking right now we don't know no. and when we put ourselves in that position we're harming ourselves we're harming the other individual and we're also harming the relationship that we could have you could as I give the pastor the, the mic we you could be that person that's supposed to speak into that person's life that person could be a person that's assigned to you and you're supposed to be able to to help them get that healing but we come in strong we come in judgmental we come in saying i know why you're doing what you're doing you we come in with all those different emotions we can shut down that relationship we can shut down that train of, uh, of conversation or that reconciliation or that restoration that the lord wanted to happen we can shut that down now will it happen absolutely because whatever god wants to happen will happen nothing just happens everything happened just my husband says that all the time it's going to happen just the way the lord wants it to happen amen amen and that's why a very very wonderful wonderfully said uh and eloquently spoken 
Beloved, well, this is why we said you have to prioritize your own emotional recovery first. It's not your job to have empathy for those in power who've hurt you, whoever it is, wherever it has come from. It is not your job to have empathy for those who have hurt you in power, but you have to give yourself time to forgive. Yes. And sometimes it's a process to forgive someone. And many of us, we think that it's, you know, we've been told just forgive. Okay, but sometimes forgiveness takes a process. It takes time. We have to give ourselves an allotment for that forgiveness to take place. But it's far more important for us. How do we do it? We might have to separate ourselves from the harm that we receive in order to restore ourselves from the parts that have hurt us and where we were wounded. Now, I'm not telling you to leave your church. I'm not telling you to leave your wife. I'm not telling you to leave your husband. But I'm saying that you have to allow yourself time to receive the forgiveness that needs to come out of you for the individual. How do you do that? You might need to contact someone. That's why we always say this is a place specifically designed for you to come to find strength for your journey and that is indeed this journey called life. You may need time and a, a place where you can contact someone, a trusted advisor who can help you stay clear and help you stay grounded as you name the hurt and the church that has hurt you as wherever it might have been. And so you have to wait some time to communicate until you have a strong support system and a strong network. And once you are clear about the nature of your church hurt, you might try to communicating the boundaries with the leaders of that church community. Yeah. Am I making sense? You're making perfect sense because the affliction is going to come. The trials and tribulations that come to make us stronger, they're going to come. Those uh, offenses they must come. They must come. That's but but once they're coming and 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 once we re we realize and we remember that God allowed it, God allowed Noah to be in that boat with right. just him and his family, while He allowed everyone else to perish. God allowed Adam and Eve to go with what, what they went through. God allowed that. Mm -hmm. God allowed David to do what he did. God allowed Moses to disobey him. It, right in front of the people. You understand what I'm saying? God allowed those things. And he said if he allowed, he said many, not some, not many. a couple, many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said offenses must come. He said trials and tribulations, they come to give us strength. Strength for what? Strength for the journey that we have that's called this life they're gonna come and because he allowed it because he's the god almighty because he doesn't make any mistakes because he knew the end before we even begin because he is the great god i am we are to trust him we are to trust his leadership we are to trust his guidance we are to trust wherever we are we are to trust it because that's where the lord allowed us to be amen especially if we're men and women of god Especially for men and women of God. Amen. Which, which leads us now to step number four. Mm -hmm. Step number four is reclaim your spiritual practices. Yes. Reclaim your spiritual practices. Beloved, as you begin to reclaim your personal power, we told you that you have to recover your power yes. by prioritizing yourself and where you've been hurt and giving it to God. You've identified it. Now you've given it to God. Now you're prioritizing yourself yes. and you're going through the process of receiving the strength and the healing that you need. And as you begin to reclaim your personal power, you can also reclaim some spiritual practices. I know we might not be honest tonight, but oftentimes as we stated in the beginning of our lesson on tonight that what we tend to do when we get hurt is we stop going to church we stop coming uh and communicating to the people of god we don't even log on to church we don't want to be involved with church why because they hurt us so bad but you have to reclaim those spiritual practices and just like any physical wound certain situations watch this may rekindle more pain once you begin to reclaim the spiritual practices that you let go, sometimes they will bring up the pain that you've experienced. And with emotional pain, there may be specific words and practices that seem normal to everyone else, such as prayer or listening to a sermon. But they bring up, watch this, up uncomfortable and painful feelings within you. And that's because those practices got twisted due to the leader's abusive actions that have taken place to hurt you but you still have to get back and do what god has told you to do that you have let go identify where the hurt came from 
was, that's identify where the hurt came from and then forgive. Once you identify that this is the person that harmed me, this is the thing that happened, this is the situation. So it could have been the pastor, it could have been the usher, it could have been a choir director, it could have been the security person on your way in. Once we identify where that hurt came from, forgive. Forgive and know if God allowed it, God doesn't hurt us, he heals us. God does not hurt us, he heals us. God does not damage us, he defends us. He defends us. God does not offend us, he uh, offers a better way. He offers a better way. I have a scripture, it is Matthew's the 11th chapter, Matthew the 11th chapter, the 29th and the 30th verse. I'm gonna read in the Amplified. And the word of the Lord reads, take my yoke upon you That's and good. learn from me. It says, following me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest, renewal, blessed, quiet for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. So that's that. God said, I offer a better way. The better way is my yoke is easier. My burdens are lighter. We want to do things the way we want to do it. You hear the Lord saying, lay your gift and go and communicate and and, and, and reconcile. No, I'm going to tell them off, Lord. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to clap That's back. What we do. I got That's receipts. What we do. I got this, that, and the other. I'm going to throw the shade. I could be real shady. She tried to harm me. She did that on purpose. He did that on purpose. Oh, pastor, you're going to take what I said to you in counseling, and you're going to preach what you... <laughs> You going to preach what I told you? What you say? Well, well, how about this? I just went through Bible uh I just went through counseling with you right before Bible study. All my notes was already there. But what the thing is, what we don't understand is this. When you go to church and you might have had a conversation just you and the Lord, you might not have told your husband, you might not have told your wife, you might not have told your best friend, you might not have told anybody. But the moment you sit down in those seats, the Lord's job is to convict us. Yes. His job is to correct us. His job is to help us with our stinking thinking. He's not going to hurt us. He's going to help us to be healed. He's not going to damage us. He's going to defend us and protect us, even if he has to defend us and protect us from us. We have to look at ourselves. We, it's our responsibility to look at ourselves, look at that man or that woman in the, in the mirror, and look at how we act and what we do. Because most of the times, That's Pastor, I'm good. about to drop it in your lap. I'm like about to drop it like it's hot. Most of the times, we're the one causing the hurt and the harm. You're like, oh, I'm the one I have all this church hurt. Sometimes you're the one that kicked it off. Yeah. You're the one that, you know, I, I tell my husband all the time, to every action, is a reaction to every cause is an effect. The Bible says it this way. You're going to reap what you sow. So sometimes it's you. And, and, and that's like a good punch. But sometimes you're the person. You're the corporate. You're the person that's putting that harm out there. And then when it comes back to you, you can't handle what they say. You can't handle the truth. Can't handle the you truth. can't handle that. You're the person that started it. Because once you lay that gift at the altar, once you go to that person to try to clear it up, and maybe if you couldn't clear it up between the two of you and you grab that pastor or that counselor and say, hey, can you be that witness between the two of us? Sometimes that person will say, well, you know what? I understand what you're saying, but this is what I'm hearing. Right. And a lot of times Sometimes that that person that caused that harm, that hurt, that pain, sometimes that person is you. Amen. Amen. As we begin to close on tonight, we're going to pick this back up next week. I think we should take our time with this because many of us have received hurt in church in so much that it has damaged us in ways that we do not know. And so as First Lady just said, um, she said we need to forgive, which leads us into the next step. You gave us the next step, even not even knowing it. But in order to forgive, beloved, what we have to do is pray. Because when you experience hurt in church, I want you to remember that church hurt. Watch this. This might hurt all of us. But we have to remember that church is not always the best when it comes to imitating Christ. Church people 
are not always the best when it comes to imitating Christ. And so we are sometimes not are not good at love. We're not good at showing and doing what God has told us to do. And when that happens, what we have to do, beloved, is we have to go to the source of love. We have to go to the one, hallelujah, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. We have to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is the one who said, I will never hurt you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. What did he mean by that? When he says, I will never leave nor forsake you, he means that I will never withdraw myself or my emotions from you in the original text so we have to understand that when we're hurt what we tend to do is we withdraw our emotional self from people and we withdraw ourselves from God but God does not do that to us and so when we experience that type of hurt what we have to do is draw ourselves delve ourselves dive ourselves into the word of God so that God can give us the grace and that God can give us the strength that we need. First Peter chapter number five and verse seven says that we ought to cast all our anxiety yes. on him. Yes. Why? Because he cares for us. I'm going to give you our next uh, directive from God. And that is to confront your offender. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse 15 says, this is what Jesus said. He said, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you if they listen to you you have won them over often hurt can be resolved by just confronting the person who has hurt you but we don't want to confront people no we don't want to do that and if i can just jump in just really quickly because i know you're closing the main important thing is we are to love the lord our god with all our heart and with all our soul Mind and so. all our might but the second one is is to love our neighbor as ourselves and if we love our neighbor as we would want someone to love us we give people the benefit of the doubt we give we're, we're able to love them through their hurt we're able to love them through their pain. We're able to pray for those individuals that despitefully misuse us and mistreat us. We pray for them, we love them, and we consider ourselves and say to ourselves, you know what, I will love someone to do this for me. I want us to always remember this as I pass it back over to my pastor. I want us to always remember we're not always right. And in any and every situation, you could always find something that you could have done differently or done better within yourself. So we're not going to say, you know what? They hurt you. They did this. They did that. Shame on them. Now, this ain't that kind of Bible study. This Bible study is for us to look at ourselves, right. for us to gain strength, yeah, exactly. for us to be restored yeah. so we can go back and help somebody else. Amen, Pastor. Amen. 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 My wife just said it very, very eloquently. This is about us. Beloved, it's not about who hurt us. I know our topic is church hurt and where we received it, but it's about us. It's about us, us moving beyond and through. Sunday we talked about we have to break through what we're going through. And so oftentimes you have to do that for yourself. You can't look at your circumstance, your situation, your problems, your finance, your marriage, your spouse, your children. You have to go to God for yourself yes. and break through what it is that you're going through. Why? Because God is listening to your cries. God is listening to your hurt. God is concerned about your pain. And God wants you to break through what you are going through. And you have a responsibility. You have to understand that life is not happening happening to you life is responding to you yes. and you have to attack life you have to go after life and what God has said about your life in accordance with his word and we have to do it God's way yes so we want to encourage you on tonight and know that you have the power to forgive those that have hurt you you have the power to move past and break through what seems to have you stagnant you have the power to move beyond your level beyond the place where you are even right now but you got to know that God is with you and when you know that God is with you you'll move past your burden you'll move past your problem and your situation we want to encourage you on tonight we're going to pick this back up next week talking about church hurt and we're going to give you some more steps so that you can be delivered so that you can be set free in this year of supernatural favor and breakthrough so that you can go after the things of God so that you can walk into the supernatural favor that God has already predestined for your life because we want you to be free God wants you to be free Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight. We bless you, we honor, and we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We extol you. We magnify your name. 
we lift you lord god your name is a name above every name that at your name god every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are lord and to the glory of god the father bless these your blessed people tonight lord they've been hurt on many many of uh, different situations god but hallelujah you are the one who sent your word and healed them you are the great physician you are the bomb in Gilead. You are Jehovah Roha, the God that heals. God, you're able to do all things but fail. And so, God, I pray tonight that you would bless these, your blessed people. Bless us, Lord God, as we endeavor to move forward in this year of supernatural favor and breakthrough. We ask, God, that you would help us to forgive those who have hurt us, whether it be the pastor, whether it be the first lady, whatever office there is, whatever lord god has taken place in the lives of your people we ask that you would give us the power to forgive them as you forgive us we thank you tonight and we believe by faith that it's done it's in the immutable and matchless name of jesus christ that we pray and we believe by faith that it's done and we will be, we will we shall be forever giving you, you the praise the honor and the glory and it's in jesus name that we pray in amen jesus and amen name. god bless you tonight beloved if you want to give on tonight our information is on the screen we are thankful for your stewardship and your gifts we're going to use them for the building of the kingdom of god we're praying for you and we know that god is going to pour back into your bosom pressed down shaken together and running over god is going to bless you but in this year of supernatural favor and breakthrough regardless to the hurt that you've had in your life regardless to the burdens that you're feeling understand that your blessing is in your burden and go after the things of God and let your faith be bigger than your fear and always know that I am, you are, because he is, in Jesus' name, God bless you and we'll see you next time.